recently uh, I, I went to Burkina Faso and, uh, and while being there I signed a um, public-private partnership agreement or I facilitated uh, the signature of a public partnership uh, agreement between the Danish company called AAK uh, and the government in Burkina Faso. Uh, and the aim of this uh, public partnership agreement is now to uh, buy uh, Shia nuts from an additional 30,000 women in Burkina Faso. The company AAK is already buying Shia nuts from, from Ghana and from parts of Burkina Faso. Now they are really stepping up buying Shia nuts from women uh, in Burkina Faso. You may know some of you that Shia nut is a very special nut and you can use it to produce a vegetable uh, oil or fat uh, that is very valuable. Uh, it's used locally for food and uh, and so, but uh, you can use it um, for high quality cosmetics and chocolate uh, as well. Um, and I think this unique uh, partnership uh, illustrates what can be done on many uh, levels. Because uh, the Shia Nod is called Women's Gold in uh, Burkina Faso, and it's a second opportunity for women to collect the nuts from the trees that are there and sell them, gain income directly to themselves, to their families, improve their lives, and at the same time, uh, deliver something in a, in a value chain going all the way to uh, high modern uh, production of chocolate and, and cosmetics. So a partnership that illustrates what we try to achieve, uh, what we wish to achieve, what we promote, uh, wherever we can go. A partnership to the benefit uh, of uh, women uh, and women as uh, strong actors in politics, in production and in, in, in partnerships. I think this is a good opportunity to discuss how we can promote that idea uh, broadly and internationally well and as well. And it is, of course, key of what we are discussing here at the Rio Plus 20 uh, Summit. We have to address these inequalities between men and women, and we have to promote women's rights and opportunities. Not only because it's their right and it's enshrined in international conventions and basic principles to a rights-based approach uh, and a human rights approach to which we in Danish development uh, policy and strategy, uh, but also because it is a very good idea for the families, women, all of you know it, get better access to income, uh, they promote uh, education and health for their families and for the children, and that benefits the society in the long run tremendously. If we engage women in politics, uh, they promote a better budgets and more transparent use of them in terms of also promoting poverty reduction and health and economics, uh, health and, and education. Uh, so uh, at all levels, uh, women's rights uh, to promote them is about the principle and the anti-discrimination that is enshrined in our obligation. It's about releasing them uh, for productive uh, employment and to create a political uh, transformation. And here we need partnerships at many levels to make it happen. Uh, energy is of course key to what we discuss here at Rio and I don't think I need to tell anybody here how important access to modern electricity is for women around the world. The women who struggle hours to collect the firewood and then they make, they struggle hours to make food uh, using traditional fuels in smoke-filled huts and have security uh, issues when they try to collect the wood uh, because they have to walk far uh, uh, and the girls who can't learn to read and write because there's no lights. Uh, all of that comes together in the vision of sustainable energy uh, for all gaining access to electricity for women around the world uh, and, uh, and thereby releasing an enormous uh, force uh, that can be used productively and, uh, and politically to create, create change and transform their uh, societies. That is part of the vision we are here. And Denmark again have strong partnership in this. An example is in Nepal, uh, where we have worked uh, to uh, uh, get access to sustainable energy for not less than one million uh, households uh, and gain the benefits of five million uh, people. And part of that is a special gender equality and social inclusion component promoting women's participation patient and, uh, and, uh, and influence in uh, the program uh, and thereby hopefully an example that can be used as to, uh, to, to inspire what we are going to now engage even more in, in creating sustainable energy uh, for all. It's about uh, uh, 
uh, jobs, uh, inequality in access to jobs, and inequality in income uh, from productive employment is, of course, uh, still a significant problem. Women in many countries work significantly more than men and still have only 10% of wages in Africa, for instance, and in many countries, of course, highly unequal uh, remuneration uh, from productive employment has to be addressed, and we can do it in many ways by principle, by policies, and also by partnerships and uh, facilitating women's access to education to, to, uh, and, and, and to credit. Denmark has a partnership, an illustrative example, between Denmark and the U.S. State Department and the Goldman Sachs Foundation. Uh, they educate 10,000 women uh, uh, to give them skills into entrepreneurship, business, uh, um, and and, uh, and yeah, facilitate in entrepreneurship and business, they educate the women and in Denmark we then create now special finance uh, facilities, credit facilities that can give credit, not micro credit, but actually visa credit to women in order they can start up companies. Uh, we are now testing it in Tanzania where the first program is up running so that women get education in entrepreneurship and business uh, uh, so tools. Uh, and then they are offered a loan facility, a credit facility, uh, and we're testing it and developing it now in, uh, in Tanzania. And what you, we figured out immediately was that you need to make a special credit program here, because women often do not have the same access, of course, to collateral as men, and therefore you need to be able to have a different credit facility that can facilitate it. Then you need to have a different follow-up mechanism as well, but then we can engage uh, women in uh, building productive businesses in Tanzania. I think that's another illustrative example of what we can uh, do. Uh, agriculture is absolutely key and uh, close to my heart as being a farmer, now part-time uh, farmer as well. Uh, but, uh, uh, but there we need definitely uh, to release the potential enormous force of women. You know the numbers, how uh, if we give the women the same access to credit and be able to uh, own land and get access to uh, the basic uh, inputs and tools uh, to promote agricultural employment, we can do exactly uh, that. We can increase agricultural production well in Malawi and Tanzania by one thing, you know, and, uh, and we can definitely create change. And agriculture is absolutely crucial to combat poverty. We know it. Uh, if you put one dollar income into a farmer, and he will be able to create a growth of 2, 2.5 uh, because farmers and many of them being women, they use their income locally, they buy the tools, they buy the clothes, they buy the, uh, the, 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 the fish or they buy the, 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 the salt locally and thereby the multiplicator effect and here I speak in one of my other uh, backgrounds, named as an economist, that the multiplicator effect of income in agriculture is enormous, and that's why promoting agricultural growth and women's position in that growth is absolutely crucial. Uh, and we can't uh, put enough focus on it. We are doing it now in our new development strategy. I mentioned the example from Burkina Faso, many more examples uh, are there. We are trying on a global level to promote uh, green growth and inclusive green growth uh, agenda in our global green growth uh, forum and uh, just this morning being in a global green growth uh, discussions where we have a partnership now going with companies uh, and, and governments especially in South Korea and in uh, Mexico but that global green growth approach is a partnership approach and it's building partnerships uh, all over the place uh, and that's also the inspiration we get out of here. And finally, I can say it's about funding. As uh, I, there was a, a woman from Sir Optimist who was up, uh, talking to me just before here, uh, they were, uh, and as you said, uh, well, we can have the principles and the policies, but in the end, it's also about funding, uh, and it, for sure it is. Uh, that's why I wear this badge. Uh, this is uh, kind of a campaign that we run five governments. Um, there's so much hype about being part of the G7, you know. Uh, so we think, well, why don't we create another club called the G0.7 uh, and, and create some hype about being uh, into that club, you know, uh, a club uh, where all the countries that give more than 0.7% all are on the road.
0.7% in development aid, uh, so we have, it's an exclusive club, it's actually more exclusive than the G7 because we're only five. <laughs> <laughs> but this G0.7, you know, that is uh, our new club in order to promote uh, uh, change also. We need more funding and we need it uh, urgently to solve the uh, big problems of the world. So that's what I would say, uh, you know, all the way from the women uh, with the Shia Nuts in Burkina Faso uh, to the global initiative we can take in order to promote change and integrate and advance uh, women's uh, agenda uh, opportunities, agenda equality in uh, sustainability. Thank you very much.